Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Teams pivot in Microsoft Teams. Though more specifically, I'll be walking you through how to create a team, forming team channels, channel best practices, adding members to a team, adding tabs, and we should also look at team settings. Now this will follow nicely onto my next video where I will look at manage and organizing your teams. So do subscribe to my channel, it's free to do so. And from there, you'll get notified when I drop that follow on video. So let's get right into the demo. A team in Microsoft Teams is an area that brings groups of people together to work on projects or communicate on common interests. They consist of two types of channels, private channels that are made up of particular people and standard channels that are visible to all. Channels form topics within an organization, such as department names, project names, company information or social interests. And within a channel, members can hold meetings, they can chat, they can share files, they can co-author on documents together and they can send praise. Now usually a company will choose just a handful of people within their organisation that will be given the permissions to create a team and manage teams and this tends to be people who have a job role, such as a director, a line manager, a department lead, HR or teams champions. One important reason for delegating only specific people to a team and managing teams is that being a team owner brings responsibility. As a team owner, you'll be responsible for creating a team, adding and removing members and guests, managing the team settings, potentially deleting or archiving that team, and you'll be in charge of reviewing usage reports in a team's admin center. I will explain what members and guests have access to later on, but for now, let me show you how to create a team. So here I am in my team's environment. I've logged on using my Microsoft 365 credentials and I'm in the Teams pivot on the menu bar. We need to go to Join, or create a team. We'll be looking at how to join a team using a code in my next video. Do subscribe to that, but for now, let's click create a team. We can choose whether we want to create a team from scratch, or there are some really useful templates that you can choose from. Any of those will automatically create the corresponding channels that relate to that team's topic. We are going to create our team from scratch. Then we need to set what kind of team we will be creating. A private, a public or an org wide team. I'm going to choose public. Give your team a name and a description. Then click create. Now let's start adding your members. Now members make up the people in your team. They can co communicate with each other and view and edit files. Here you can specify what roles these members will play in your team. It is recommended that you have at least two team owners to cover each other when one's away or potentially leaves the organisation. You may choose to have three. Then the other people in the team will remain just as members. By default, your team will be created with three tabs, posts, files and wikis. 
Now, I like to think of Wiki as a digital notebook for my team. Posts are great, though a Wiki gives structure to key points raised in the posts. We will look now at how you can add more tabs to your channel later on. Let's move on, though, to adding channels to our team. Now, before you start creating channels, pause and plan these out properly with other owners of your team. There are channel best practices that you should know about and implement when you are setting up your team. And they are that you are to plan your names consistently and according to topic names. Some examples of channel names would include department names such as finance, sales, retail, accounts, HR. Or if you have a company that has many branches, you could create your channels by location. By default, every team comes created with a general channel. It is important that when collaborating in your team that you use the channels properly. The general channel should only be used for posts and files that do not have a channel topic related to it. Though if that topic type is being brought up often, then maybe you should consider creating a new channel around that topic. Otherwise, all members should be communicating and collaborating in the correct channel around one specific topic. There may be times when you need to add guests temporarily to your team. This will be external people. An example of this would be if you are working on a particular project with an external contractor or customer. In this instance, an owner can invite that partner or consultant to join the team. You would invite them using their email credentials and guests would have access to the team, though have limited capabilities. You can see them here added as a guest. Later in time, if you wish to manage the people in this team, you can go back here, click the three dots, manage team, and then change their role or delete them as a member of your team. We're now going to look at adding tabs to our team channels. Turn your favorite apps and files into tabs at the top of your channel here. By adding these apps, you will leverage rich tool capabilities that these apps can offer in one single interface. Your team members can then access these apps quickly and this increases workflows and productivities. Here I'm showing you how to add a SharePoint app. I'm then going to select any uh, SharePoint site. I've popped in the URL and then um, click save. And that, then you can see here that the SharePoint site appears as an additional tab. Here is what a Word app looks like at the top as a tab. It opens up a Word document that you might be using regularly in your team. And lastly, if you uh, choose to add a to-do list, a planner to your team to allocate roles and jobs and tasks, we can add in that also. Do note that not all apps are available for private channels. We are now going to look at managing team settings. Now, as an owner, you have access to team settings whereby you can manage channel specifics, member and guest permissions and tags, you can view the analytics of your team and manage your team apps. Here I'm showing you how you can do this. We can set the member permissions here. Check on, on and off any of these options. We can also set the guest permissions here too. Here are the analytics. Now this will start generating as your um, channel and team is being used. And you can create tabs. Now we'll look at tags in my next video. Now the last thing we need to do is educate our members about around what the team is, why they have been added to the team and what roles they will play to support the team's success. We can do this by creating a new post using rich formatting. If you don't do this, your team will become a little confused when they start getting notifications that they have been added to a new team. 
People need to know why they have been invited to this team and what is required of them. Otherwise, they will have a resistance or a desire to participate in that team. So we're going to add our title here. And then we're going to just pop in a little welcome note for our team. Send that off. Then everybody in the team can read that post. And there you have it. You have learned how to create a team, add members, add channels and apps, and also how to manage team settings. Do subscribe to my channel. Not only does that allow me to continue to bring you these free educational Microsoft 365 videos, but you will instantly get updated when I drop them. See you soon.